Hi, Kenny Arts here. I'd ask the followers of my audio podcast, AI Aliens Unveiled, what the acronym WITWIGO stood for. They had a couple of days to figure it out. Of course, I can't wait a couple of days during this video, so how about I give you 10 seconds? Ready? Here we go. WITWIGO is a question you probably heard and may have asked yourself. What in the world is going on? Enough of the fun and games. That was a question I've been asking myself and attempting to answer in my podcast, AI Aliens Unveiled. Artificial intelligence is changing practically everything from the way we go to work to the way we go to war. It has the potential of becoming an existential threat. What about aliens? Not those from another nation, but from another planet or dimension. Are they real? If so, where did they come from? These are the issues I unveil in the podcast. I rely on the Word, that is, the Bible, as a source of truth. I have a friend who suggested that I expand my podcast beyond AI and aliens. I admit those are indeed niche topics, especially the alien stuff. I know my friend's trying to help me reach a larger audience. I rejected my friend's advice on the premise that a targeted, narrowly focused podcast would be easier to produce and more effective in messaging, since that's where I've given much of my attention. I saw a film recently that changed my narrowly focused outlook. The film's title was Sing a Little Louder. It's based on a true story. An elderly man was reflecting back on the time when he was a young child. He witnessed the horrors of the Jewish Holocaust from the pews of his church. The setting is a small church in Germany. Railroad tracks run directly behind the church. Like clockwork, a train rumbles down the track every Sunday morning during the service. As the whistle sounds and the train approaches, the pastor preaches a little louder. The congregation is unfazed, as this is a routine. This particular morning, something is different. They notice the metal wheel screeching to a stop. From inside the church, they hear human cries and wailing echoing off the stone walls. The pastor preaches even louder to mask the haunting sounds coming from the train's cattle cars. His preaching won't hide the cries, so he begins to sing a hymn, very loud. He motions for the organist and choir to join him. Still, there's the faint anguish of human suffering. One by one, troubled-looking congregants take it upon themselves to join the singing. No longer can the cries be heard, but the young boy still hears them. He slips out of the church. He steps up to the cattle car and sees a young Jewish girl, possibly his age, peeking out at him between the splintered wooden slats. Instead of asking for help, she asks the boy his name. The boy's eyes moisten as he looks into her sad eyes. She asks again, What is your name? They see some movement down the side of the line of cattle cars. Nazi guards are coming towards the young boy. At the same time, his mother comes from the church, grabs her weeping son by the shoulders, and leads him back inside the church. The young Jewish girl disappears back into the darkness of the cattle car. They knew. Now we know her destination and fate. The little boy, now an old man reliving that dreadful day, says this, God forgive all of us who call ourselves Christians and did nothing to intervene. The film ends with these words from the Bible. Rescue those being led away to death. That's found in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 11. The world has seen the horrific events of October 7th. Hamas brutally tortured, captured, and murdered Jews. For about a day, most of the world was in shock and sympathy with the Jews. Today we hear the chants, From the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. Jews will not replace us, echo in our memory. Groups hailing Hamas as terrorists and freedom fighters and other dreadful words calling Israel the little Satan and America the great Satan. A wave of anti-Semitism is sweeping around the world. Here in America, on college campuses, on the streets of our cities, at the halls of Congress, even from some pulpits, people are sowing seeds of hatred against the nation of Israel and Jewish people around the world. We who claim to know Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, cannot remain silent. To put it another way, we cannot sing loud enough in our churches to drown out the shouts against the Jews in the public arena. We must act. My friend was right. There are things I could talk about other than AI and aliens, things we all as believers can say and do. That doesn't mean we have to quit our jobs or cancel our podcasts and become full-time activists for Israel. But whatever platform we have, we need to use it in support of God's chosen people. If you would like to help, Please subscribe, give this a thumbs up, 
and click the notification bell for updates. Also, check the show notes for resources. Think about this. Today the Jews, maybe tomorrow the Christians.